Hello everyone and welcome to a game called My Dear Hatchet Man. My Dear Hatchet Man is about being in the woods alone and totally not about being stalked by a guy with a axe. So let's go ahead, start the game and see what we got. What is your name? The pre-made name is Hunter, but I'm not a hunter, so we're gonna go with me. And I am a familiar, familiar. What, what gender is, is, yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with fe being familiar. Um, it was somewhat of an old habit of mine to walk every night. I walked. Due to the consistency of my routine, walking has helped me to put my mind at ease and numb out of the fresh, cool nights. Besides, it was a good source to wear me down before bed. I don't have to rely on sleeping meds as much. There was nothing fun about laying in bed, having my eyes glued to the ceiling, and disassociating. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's no fun at all. I have become so familiar with the path, staring at the same damaged sidewalk, hidden a couple of pebbles with the tip of my shoes. I would usually disappear into the woods for 20 minutes or so. I wouldn't call myself a nature lover per se. Hell, I could not imagine myself abandoning my phone. But at night, the woods were all I wanted. I don't know why, but this has been the only place that gave me motivation to move and to get out of bed. College hasn't been too kind to me, and having just moved out on my own just recently made me feel all the more isolated. Was there something wrong with me? No. No, I totally feel that. Taking little walks to relax at night, to sleep as normal. I never stayed from my path. Strayed from my path. I never strayed from it. It has practically burned into my memory. And I was kind of proud of that. It was like my own little secret hideout, where if I could one day just disappear from it all. However, today I feel bold. And so I wandered off from my usual path, heading into the wild, to find that there is a man with an axe waiting to stab you in the throat. <laughs> At first, the new environment felt nice. Without noticing, time kind of flew by and all my sense of direction was withering away. And that's when you start to go back, my friend. I now find myself confused and alone in the woods. Fuck! God dang it! I couldn't recognize any noticeable landmarks to help my way out. So, oh, how funny is this? So, I feel like the final girl of a campy slasher movie being tracked down by the killer. There was a movie called Final Girl. It's a pretty, pretty interesting one. Fuck. I'm so stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Of course I was going to end up lost. Why would I... Why would I be as so stupid as to go off that path, bro? Great. Not only am I lost, it's dark, there's no stars, only the faint light of the moon N not doing much to help. But I am losing sleep as we know it. Hey, wh where's your phone flashlight? Can, can, you, uh, can you bring that out, please? I can feel the soles of my feet starting to ache. Perhaps now might be a good time to collect myself before I have a full-blown meltdown in the middle of the woods. I lay my head low, feeling a heavy weight on me. I took a few deep breaths. Um. Let it out. I'm gonna go ahead and cry, let it out. Hold on, I, I can go back. Um, I guess I'll save it right here because we obviously got options. So we're gonna see what happens if we just cry, let it out, you know? Too late, I couldn't help it but feel warm, frustrating tears run down my face. I let out a few soft sobs, forcing myself to stay as quiet as possible. For God's sake, I really don't know where the hell I am. Snap! The deafening silence was abrupted, abrupted by what seemed to be like a twig. What the hell made that sound? I jumped, startled. I took a few steps back, nearly losing my balance. Wherever that sound came from, I didn't see anything. 
no, don't cry. A muffled voice came behind me. I quickly turn around and see a person. Oh my god. He's hot. <laughs> oh no. Sorry, a joke. I still ill could not make out his features well. His hair was wild, sticking out from the top of his head. He was holding something. A hatchet. Am I about to get murdered? My muscles tense up as I prepare to make a break for it. He seemed to notice my mannerisms. H hey! He held up his hands, letting the hatchet slip from his fingers and into the grass. His movements were slow and harmless. Take it easy. Who the hell are you? Well, doing in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night. That's my thing. Why are you stealing it? Why are you stealing my thing, bro? Just some guy trying to help you out, that's all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But that's a smile like that. You could have fooled me. <laughs> that wasn't very comforting at all. Um, especially now that he reached over to the ground, retrieving his hatchet, and casually swung it over his shoulder. Why the hell oh, did he sneak up on me like that? Why was he in the woods? Has he been following me? Where did you even come from? I live here, actually. Just a couple miles. Uh, got my own place and everything. Why do you have an ex? Also, I wasn't crying. Yeah, I was. I chose the crying option. I know I was crying, okay? It's a hatchet, first of all. Sure. <laughs> Are you gonna murder me? What? No. I was getting some firewood. Man, my character is so judgmental about hatchet man in the middle of the night. Why you gotta be like that, me? It is starting to get cold around here. I was still trying to come down from the adrenaline. I didn't even notice the chilly breeze. I start connecting the dots. He was probably telling the truth. I am not at all experienced in uh, forest living. Who am I to tell him that he doesn't know what he's talking about? So why exactly did you come here? Well, you want to get out of here, don't you? I know my way around. Maybe I am being too paranoid. He doesn't seem like he has any intention of hurting someone. See me? Not everyone is out to get you. Just follow him so you can take you, he can take you back home. In case you're ske still skeptical, you can go behind me. He offered out his arm. Of course, I hesitate, but I took it anyway. I could feel his fingerless gloves as he gave in my hand a tight squeeze. He had some coarseness, but it didn't bother me. It took us a good while to get back. I must have really wandered way far off than expected. The trees were becoming less dense, and I could see his traits more and more. His eyes were particularly striking. Uh, they were both different. I shouldn't be staring. Seems kind of rude. In fact, the whole time I have been acting rude, huh? Hey, um... Hmm? Sorry for being kind of reluctant back there. <laughs> He simply shrugged and smiled at me. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, if I was in your position, I would have probably freaked out if I saw some random guy with an axe approaching. Hatchet. It's a hatchet! Listen, you told me it was an hatchet. Now you call it an axe? Hypocrite! Sure. <laughs> that seemed to get a laugh out of him, and I let out some tension as well. It seem seems a oh, while. Well, Seems to be a while since I've laughed about something. <laughs> Nowadays it feels like I, I've been so isolated. I'm surprised I could achieve a, achieve a conversation with him, let alone other people. With time, the dirt path merged into the edge of the sidewalk. Thank God we made it. What a relief. Uh, there you go. Oh, thank you, Hatchet Man. Thank you. Oh my God, thanks. I didn't notice that I was still holding his hand. He gave me a small smile before I stuffed my hands in my pocket. Other than having a breakdown in the woods, this entire experience wasn't that bad. I'll see you around then. He continued to stand in his place while I turned my back from the woods, walking into my neighborhood once again. Stopping at the front door, I gave him one last wave. I couldn't really tell from um, the distance, but he seemed to wave back. He just seemed to. 
Not sure if he did. Um, and why did you take him to where you live? He helped you. Now he knows where you live. You're, you're going to get murdered. I'm so tired. Exhausted, I immediately threw myself onto bed, finally able to get some rest. My eyes, they feel heavy. That stranger, he seemed nice. I didn't catch his name. I'll ask him tomorrow, when I see him. I'm going to see him tomorrow? My body is aching. It feels like someone is on top of me. Oh god. How long did I sleep for? It seems way too bright to be early in the morning. I guess it must have been incredibly late when I slept. Last night, uh, memories started flooding back to the encounter I had with that stranger in the woods. I feel some sort of mix of comforting jitters sinking in. I had one... I had only moved in a few weeks ago. But now, knowing that he has been in the woods the entire time I have been exploring them? It was a little uneasy to process. It's like a part of my privacy has been exposed. To be fair, I do feel a little silly thinking that. I didn't own the woods. If anything, I invaded his privacy by going off my usual path. Although, I haven't lived here for very long. I am surprised I haven't heard about a man living in the forest. Then again, it's not like I am really chatty with the neighbors to inform me about that. Was I thinking too much about this? Am I being insensitive? Should I be feeling like I want to run into him again? I didn't ask for his name. Um... I always check my phone, so let's do that. Before doing anything, I want to catch up on what has been happening. I only see one message. It was an un unknown number. Oh, I'm gonna open that message. You know, I'm too curious. Hey, do you know the chapter we are studying for English? This is Erica, by the way. Oh, Erica. I remember her. She is part of my class. I could recall all oh, what exchange. I could recall we exchanged phone numbers because of our professor recommended it. She was the one who approached me. Didn't talk to her a lot. She seemed like the type. Wait, she didn't seem like the type, but would casually answer questions in class. One thing that stuck out, however, was that she had an incredible style. She had an eye for colors and patterns from what I could tell. It was surprising that she wasn't taking a fashion course, but instead an interior design course. Erica was cool and seemed like she had her shit together, unlike me. Chapter 4, I believe. With a groan, I forced myself up from the comfort of my bed. To be honest, it seemed better to do something than to be slacking around in my sheets. This has been the first time I've been motivated to do anything in a while, actually. That's kind of sad. Oh, I feel that. I mean, this is my first YouTube video after a while, so... Well, welcome to the club. Dang. Thanks. Uh, smiley face, question mark. Sorry, can you tell I don't text often? That made me smile just a tad. Everybody thought it was going to be Hatchet Man on the other end of that phone, but everybody. What if it is him? Could be him. Who knows how long he's been stalking us. It seems like a stupid decision to go back in the forest just to thank some stranger. Dangerous, some might say. I mean, at least the sun was still out, so it wouldn't be as bad as staying in the woods at night, right? I stuffed my phone into my pocket and prepared to get ready. I walked back into the familiar path. The cool air was sharp as ever. I could feel it nipping at the tip of my nose. I tried to recall the path I took that initially got me lost yesterday. It didn't take long for me to fall back into a daze, feeling sen senseless. Uh, senseless, senselessly, sensely? What is that word? Sensely strayed. Okay. All right, Mew. Just thank him, and you can go on your merry way, and then get some shut eye. Simple as that. Why didn't you thank him last night? I feel like if someone found me in the woods and I was lost, and then they took me, I'd be like, "Oh my God, thank you." 
You you saved my life. <laughs> but no, my character is like, okay, I'm gonna thank him the next day, and I might not even see him again. Thoughts start to speculate in my head the more I paced around in the frantic circle. Why am I being stupid? He should be here, right? Why would he just randomly be in the woods for you, waiting for you to come thank him? Like, why would he just... He'd be like, okay, he's gonna go mourn the spot that he met you at yesterday. He's like, this is the spot where I met that person, right? And I'm gonna come here and see if they come back or something. What, What is this thought process that you, you're going through? But I think this was a good idea. I don't know why you thought it was a good idea. It, it seems like a really stupid idea. It would be nice to have someone to share the woods with. What if he hurts me? Like he did. Like he did? Like he did? Wait, when did he hurt you, bro? Tell me that. Like he did. Oh, you're here again. Oh, he is here. So, we're all weird in this universe. Oh, thank God. I might have been... It might have been my desperation, but the sound of his voice took a huge wave of relief off, um, off of me, onto me. What? I turned around, too, eagerly, seeing a smug expression on his face. He made me happy in a way? You seem to get easily lost. What if I wasn't here to help you? Out? Doe eyes? His comment made me play with the hem of my sweater. I could feel my cheeks starting to burn. Hopefully he didn't notice. Well, I, I actually came to see you. Why did I say it like that? I want to, to say thank you. Properly, I mean. I know I already did last night. Bro, you... I already forgot. Did I? <laughs> you said you did, and, and now you're saying you did. But I might have come off as crass, and I still feel bad about the whole ordeal. I started to ramble at this point. I need to get over this. Get this over with before I come off as hysterical. So, um, thank you, uh, Alan. I'm sorry. My name is Alan. Might as well get that out of the way, right? Oh, well, thanks for helping me out, Alan. I gave his name a try, it came out softer than I'd usually speak. I noticed him begin to smile, avoiding eye contact. It, yeah, please do not look at me like that, bro. <laughs> you look kind of crazy, bro. I was beginning to feel the silence between us start to grow. No problem. Besides, it is really sweet of you to come back just to tell me that. Oh, he was flirting. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> it, it flattered you. You didn't mind it, but... Sure, it flatters me. Listen, man. I'm... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll date you. you. You went into the woods for me. You pulled me out, so... You're my hero, bro. I'll date the heroes. Um, it was kind of cute. How he became so bashful, then flirtatious so suddenly. I couldn't help but to smile back at him. We began to start the whole different conversation from there. At first, it was just a regular small talk, most of it about me, of course. Of course. You talk about you yourself a lot, bro? I told him what I did for a living and what I was currently studying. Um, he seemed to be a good listener, or at least I think he was trying to be. It became evident that I kind of ran out of things to talk about. It was only fair to ask about him, right? I didn't want to make it seem like I was only talking about myself, you know? Not to sound rude or anything, but... Hmm? I'm a little curious about your whole thing here. Oh. I know I just moved in and it's none of my business, but why do you live all the way out here? How come no one has ever told me about you? He seemed to give some thought to my questions. He simply gave me a shrug. Don't know. I always figured I'd live uh, better on my own, I guess. At least that's what I think. So, maybe he was a bit of a hermit? I totally didn't mean to judge him. In a way, I kinda do feel for him not wanting to interact with others. He was just a little more on the opposite end. Maybe he thinks I'm the weird one for wanting to interact with him. It's not every day someone just comes back to thank you for helping them out of the woods. For a loner, 
he sure was easy to talk to. He was the one he was the one to first start a conversation better than I ever could. H hey he snapped me out of it, like he knew I was about to get lost in my thoughts. Wanna go check something out? I think you might like it. I blinked. The way he worded it sounded very vague. I don't know. It depends. Are you gonna trick me and and plan my murder? Sounds very fishy of you, Alan. I, I joked, and he seemed to get a good laugh out of it. I was not a very good... It was not a very good joke at all. Because I just implicated again that he was gonna kill me, bro. I thought you were cool with him. If you were scared of him, why are you coming back out here? I... I don't understand myself, but it felt good to just laugh with someone. Maybe I needed this. I just needed to talk to someone. I mean, now you got me curious, might as well, right? Good. He seemed extremely pleased, I agreed. He took a hold of my shoulder to guide me to the direction he planned to take me. We both took our time walking through the forest, having a whole casual conversation to make up for it. Um, to... What? It felt like being reunited with an old friend and trying to catch up on your lives together was nice. I began to share some stuff to Alan that I haven't been able to talk about for a while. In return, he told me little things about himself. It took. I took notice of him tr eyeing. Wait. I took notice of him trying to cr ush crunchy leaves under his shoes. Sometimes getting bummed out if one of them didn't crunch. It was kind of cute. I noticed his skin looked slightly more sickly pale, tiny, but still noticeable scratches across his cheeks. And his eyes bore dark circles. It almost looked like he was about to collapse, but he looked so gentle. He seemed to have noticed that I was looking at him. Oh no, I got caught. I ducked my head, scratching the side of my cheek. Before I could come up with an, an excuse that I wasn't totally staring at him, Alan pushed my head down, getting into my knee. Get, wait, wait. P Alan pushed my head down, getting onto my knees rather painfully. What the heck? Shh. Alan crouched beside me, carefully moving closer to what seemed like a small stream with wildflowers and vegetation, almost like a mini meadow covering the entire land. Then I see a deer. It was happily nibbling on some grass, and on occasion would twitch its cute fluffy tail. Both me and Alan didn't move a muscle, so as to not scare the cute creature, but we still enjoyed the view. Little cutie, ain't he? I always come here to see if he is around. That was adorable. Who knew Alan had such a sensitive soul? At least that's what I thought. What I thought! What? What's gonna happen? It may not come as a surprise to you, but my favorite animals are deers. Is that why you called me doe eyes before? Do I remind you of a deer, Alan? Alan stayed quiet. A little taken aback by my question. However, another sound stopped him from responding. He got lucky. Huh? They're new. Another deer emerged from the woods, joining in. I couldn't deny that it was rather an adorable sight to see. Maybe it's more than one reason. What was that? It was barely a whisper. I could only manage to hear a few words from him. N nothing. Anyway, want to grab a bite to eat? I know there is a store not far from here. Why not? I am getting peckish. Oh, he is totally dating us right now. He think he on a date right now, bro. He swiftly got to his feet again, not bothering to dust off his clothes. He still ha had the decency to hold out his hands for me to get up. Alright, we probably won't take long if we get going now. Much like before, he kept holding my hands for the entire walk back to civilization. It stopped feeling so foreign, as if I knew Alan and trusted him enough to hold hands. I don't know why he made me feel so safe. I feel melodramatic thinking about it. Everything seemed to get blurry and I could feel my stomach doing flips. Blurry? Why is- why- why are we getting blurry right now, bro? 
That's a little sus. It was then that the obnoxiously bright lights of the store pulled me out of the trance. There was a couple of people in this small store, most of them adults, collecting some boxes of beer. Oh, look, it's me! Collecting a box of beer! <laughs> I see myself in those people. Except I, I'm more of a vodka drinker than a beer drinker. Vodka's where it's at, bros. Anyway, Alan starts scanning around as if to memorize where everything was. His attention was immediately caught by the ice aisle. He smiled, brightened like a child. Pick anything you want. It's on me. How generous of him. I look around and decide to get... Um, ooh, I'm a slushy person. I love ice cream, but I'm feeling slushy right now. I quickly ran to the side of the store, grabbing myself a huge cup of frozen syrupy goodness. They were fairly cheap. Boom. Got everything? Yeah, let's go. Slushy, slushy. <laughs> we left the store, basking in our glorious treats. Alan proceeded to scarf his ice cream down. You're going to choke yourself eating it like that. I love the background out here. Look, the, the clouds is pretty. I wish I could see more of that and less of the store. <laughs> um, and that's how I want to go. Oh, well, here lies Alan, death by ice cream. He dramatically put his hands on his heart, lowering his head all gloomy. I stored it out and playfully pushed him, though I could barely manage to make him lose his footing. People will think you died from lactose, then. I mean, I kind of am lactose intolerant. Just a bit. And you took that risk? I like to live on the edge. I roll my eyes. No, seriously, I stole five chocolate bars while nobody was looking. What? You shoplift? He gave me a proud smirk, unzipping his coat, showing me his loot. I was dumbfounded. I couldn't freaking believe it. This man just robbed the store. Uh, how did I not even notice him? He must have been really sneaky and quick. You should see the look on your face right now. He reached in, grabbing one from the stash. <laughs> from the stash. You can't just... Yeah, you can. If you don't get caught, you can't... No, no, don't do it. <laughs> um, this is... That isn't... I said it was on me, right? They aren't gonna waste their time over the, some shit over stolen candy. Besides, his fingers fidget with the wrappers, prying it open and taking a bite before nudging it towards me. Stolen stuff tastes better because it's free. Hesitantly, I reached over and took the tiniest bite. I couldn't explain it, but he was right. It was like the forbidden candy bar. Still, I feel kind of bad that he went out of his way to steal stuff from me. Bro. I'm not going to say get a man who steals stuff from you, but... At least he was thinking about you when he was doing it. <laughs> Uh, offer him a taste of yours. It only seemed fair, right? It was the least I could do. I motioned to my slushy towards him. At first he gave me a confused look, but soon he got the hint. Ah, uh, he leaned down, accepting my offer. Unknowingly, he grazed the top of my hand as he held the cup. Or maybe he did. I, I could feel him tightening his grip slightly as he looked up at me. I could feel the tips of my ears beginning to heat up. I could not look anywhere else besides his gaze. You have good taste, doe eyes. He only smiled at me before walking away and continued to eat his forbidden chocolate bar. Hey! I followed him soon after. We walked all the way back to my house, eating the stolen candy. I got some sort of cheap thrill knowing we could have potentially got caught, and Alan shared his feeling as well. Being with him was thrilling. I didn't notice how late it had gone since I had soon reached the comfort of my bed. I felt tired, sure, but I also felt satisfied? At ease? Whatever. I felt I knew I was going to see him again tomorrow. Heck yeah, we're gonna date a hatchet bro! Huh? 
I open my eyes, but I can't see anything. I try to feel around, but nothing appears to be in front of me. Nope, now we're gonna get kidnapped by the hatchet man! We're gonna get ki- no, What the heck? Fingers start tightening around my throat. I start to claw desperately. My lungs feel like they are about to collapse. So. Holy shit, that was an intense dream that I had. What a way to start the morning. Uh, we will check the messages, because I feel like I'm leaving a trail in case uh, anything happens, for fuck's sake. It isn't even a person that woke me up. Instead, it was some gosh darn emergency alert. Something about another missing person seems like it is out of my control. My head was pounding, and I felt incredibly drained. The time reminded me that that I got only a measly three hours of sleep last night. A half-empty bottle of sleeping meds on its side. Hey! Hey! You said you weren't relying on sleeping meds. What the heck is this? What the- That's a lie. Lies. I did not want to get up. I wanted to see Alan, though. I wonder what he was gonna do, pl gonna plan today. He had a knack for keeping me on my toes and surprising me. He makes me feel warmth every time I think about him. He was kind of strange, but it was charming in a way. Well, if I was ever going to see him, I might as well get ready. Despite the rough morning, I didn't feel quite as tired as I did before. It could be because I was pretty much looking forward to meeting up with the local cryptic man. I just... I, I met just two days ago. It was certainly worth getting lost in the woods just to hang out with Alan. Much better than wasting my time being cooped up inside my home, water bottles and dirty laundry taking up space. Right on cue, I see Alan from a distance waiting for me, I presume. He appeared to be playing w around with his hatchet before noticing my presence. He cutely waved at me, and with the biggest grin on the, his face. Did he always have uh, shaped sharp molars? Mew, you made it. Hey, Alan. Sorry if I was late. Not really. You're by in time, actually. Really? Huh. I figured er, because of my lack of sleep, I would arrive later than expected. Alan rested his hand ends on his knees, trying to get it at my eye level. He was really close. Ready for what I had planned for today? He flashed me a hopeful smile. How could I say no to his excitement? Yeah, let's... Before I could answer, my phone went off. Ah, sorry. It feels rude to answer a phone call while Al Alan is around waiting for me to answer. But what if the call was something important? Hey! Hey, what's up? Immediately after speaking, I looked to Alan, who seemed to have an annoyed expression on his face. That's a little bit more than annoyed. That's like straight up anger right there. And that's a little red, a little bit of a red flag, kind of. Sorry if I'm bothering you at the moment. I know it's the end of the week, and trust me, I want nothing more than to shun the rest of the world as well, but... I want you to meet me at the park. Is that okay? Uh? I don't see why not. Erica might have needed something from me. It wouldn't be cool to leave her like that. Sure thing. Can I bring a friend over? My eyes hovered over Alan. His annoyed face now brightened when I mentioned him. Although, once I took my eyes off him, I could have sworn that smile dropped once again. As long as you get your hermit ass over here, I don't see the harm. Don't be late or I'll end up ditching you. I couldn't tell if she was joking or not. She had a strange sense of humor, and that sometimes flew out of my, over my head. We both hung up, and I looked back to Alan. His displeased face was replaced by a curious one. Whoa. He appeared to be looking at my phone. Guess I have, I have been gone for a while. What? My phone? You've never seen a phone before? Oh no, not that. I do have a phone, but... Alan proceeds to reach into his back pocket, pulling out something out. It was a phone. An old flip phone. I haven't seen these bricks for what seemed like forever. Mine isn't as cool as yours. He smiled bashfully before putting his phone away. Wow, 
You need to get caught up with the current times, Ellen. Our phones do much more stuff now. Ah? Huh? That's incredible. <laughs> we both start to walk up to the park, as I showed him all the apps I had. Being in the woods, there wasn't any steady signal, so showing him any type of social media was thrown out the window. Nevertheless, he was still impressed as I bombarded him with this new information. If what he had said was true, then he must have been off of society for a long time. A really long time. Yet he's so comfortable with talking to me like he, he's been talking to people forever. Why was he in the woods? What happened to him? I did not realize the huge scar on his arm. Were those stitches? Oh god, Alan, what happened to you? Both me and Alan continued to talk about our day as we made our way into the park. I wonder why Erica wanted me to come. We didn't have to study or do anything class related, which is what she usually calls me for. She told me that she doesn't usually date classmates or hang out with them outside class because, well, too many guys thought they could get a chance of borrowing my bras and were disappointed after I had the gall to reject them. Yikes. Probably why she decided to approach me rather than any of the male classmates. Mew! A voice I didn't recognize called my name? Alan puts on a displeased look, his eyes watching the other side of the park. I could see two people. One I could immediately recognize as Erica. The other person, however, I'd never seen him before. How did he know my name? Is Erica trying to set me up right now? What the hell? Oh uh, my god, Mew. Uh, hi? This guy was sure, uh, eccentric. From the tone of my voice, he, he could tell I was confused. Do you not remember me? He sounded kind of disappointed. Jeez, dude, now you're making me feel bad. I gave him a good long look, the hamster wheels in my head beginning to move. Actually, still? Then the guy gave me a smile and a wink. Right on! Oh my god, it was him! I could see the life nearly draining out of his eyes. I could barely hold my excitement in. Stu was a good friend of mine back since we were kids. Even and before the two of us attended school together, we knew each other. It was when I left for college we kind of lost touch. Why couldn't you just greet me yourself, you bozo? I wanted to surprise ya. What a guy. He had always had something up his sleeve. He seemed quite as pleased as I was. I didn't think I would have missed him so much. Oh, I totally forgot. I have been so caught up with Stu and Erica. I have seemed to have just left Alan out of the conversation. However, by the look on his face, he didn't appear that he wanted to be a part of this. So I kind of felt bad. This is Alan. His tone was very, uh, uninterested. The three remained silent after Alan greeted himself. Erica had this look in her eye. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she appeared to be, uh, deep in thought. Uh, please, somebody break this silence. I'll say something. Great, looks like it's up to me then. So wait. All three of them looked at me at once. I spoke up. How did you and Erica even know each other? Stu remained silent, but Erica spoke up for him. Oh, he approached me after seeing me talking to you after class, saying that he knew you. I was a bit stunned. Did Stu go to the same college as me and Erica did? That's a bit questionable. Alan spoke up. It was a little startling, since he had only said one word the entire conversation. Erica only hide him. I only eyes him? Eyes him? That's a little, little, uh, oof, oof, um, right there. Erica only eyed him while Stu seemed to become stiff. Things seemed to have gone a bit out of hand now. Why didn't you just approach Mew in the first place? That's true. Why didn't he? Stu was always the type to make the first move when greeting someone. Hey, now, it's a little rude to intrude on someone who you met first met. Don't you think, big guy? Bro, shut the hell up! You, he makes a great point here. The serial killer makes a great point here um, about how wide you didn't approach me first, bro. 
You're avoiding the question. The two were now staring each other down. Me and Erica looked at each other, as if we both read each other's minds, plagued with worry. Surprisingly, Erica stepped in. Thank God. If you really want to know, he approached me first because he was asking for my number. That makes more sense. Oh, I see. What? Mew? No, I get it. I'll see you around then, Stu. Bro, what? What? Wait, wait. What happened? It was at this point Alan took hold of me with a satisfied look on his face. Wait, 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 wait. I got mad? That... What? What? <laughs> Hold on. What? I'm gonna go back. What is this conversation? Why did I get mad? He was asking for... So you got mad because he was asking her for her number, bro? He's an old friend. A friend, not... What? Wait. I'm... What is this? <laughs> Without a word, he took me away from the park. Is there a reason? He wrapped his arms around me protectively. I can't explain why, but him being so close to me like this brought me comfort. He gave me a comfortable smile, which I also returned. Mew, wait! I looked back, seeing Erica running up to me, Stu right behind her. I do feel bad for leaving them behind and at the drop of the hat. Bro! Why did you do that? What? 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 Why is Stu- She got- I still don't understand the conversation, so I, maybe it will be explained. Alan looked at me, shaking his head disapprovingly, as if telling me that talking to them wasn't worth it. Let me explain myself, please. Sure. What is it? I couldn't leave him like this. He was my friend. Yeah, a friend! So why are you upset about him asking about her number? I don't get it. My first ever friend. Alright, Stu, go ahead. He sighed I eyed looking to the ground and filled with his pockets of his pants. Listen, Erica worded it weird. I I, I know that back then I wasn't well. What I mean is that please don't perceive me as the type in that type of way. I really just wanted to see you. I heard enough, Stu. I gave him a reassuring smile. Remembering Stu back then, he was kind of a flirt with everyone. It shouldn't surprise me that he tried to get with Erica. Bro! Wh but why does it matter if he's a friend? A friend! That's it! Why is he not allowed to flirt with other people? I don't get why you got mad about that still. I don't know if I got upset at Stu for getting into his old ways or... Old people ask each other out. That's a thing. That's normal. Why, why is this being a thing right now? I don't understand. Or that I got upset that he was... Why did I... I don't get... I still don't get why I'm upset about him flirting. Um... Um, I guess his antics, he could have just asked me. Even back then, it bothered me, and I didn't know why. Maybe because he was my friend, and every time he had a fling, I couldn't get to hang out with him. I breathed out, still smiling at the two. I know you're trying your best. I am. He said it so seriously, but, but yet with so much sincerity. And with that, I left with Alan. I tried to relax, tried to distract myself. I was bundled into a ball at the end of my couch, Alan sitting on the other side. The living room was dark, with only the light of the TV giving any life. My attention wasn't on the TV, however. It was towards Alan. His eyes stayed glued to the screen before. He shifted them in my direction. What? I... <laughs> I'm not going to talk about how I don't understand why we got mad about him flirting with people and having a fling with people. I don't... People do that. People date around. That's a normal thing. I don't know why this is being perceived as something bad. I mean... I don't... I don't know. Where's the limit, I guess? Maybe he does it so much that, like, he just, like, hooks up with whoever whenever, all the time, then maybe that's a problem. But, 
I don't know, it just doesn't seem like that. It just seems like he's dating around, and that's a normal thing, so I don't get why we're getting so mad about that. His eyes stay glued to the screen before he shifted them in my direction. This is the second time I have been caught staring at him. I averted my gaze immediately. I must have been and weird to him. You okay? I'm sorry. Are you still upset about what happened? I didn't really want to answer that, but my silence was deafening. I am being stupid, sorry. I don't, I don't know why I'm so upset. I couldn't control it. I could see him softening his face at the corner of my eye. I didn't know why I started rambling to him, but I did. I suddenly felt a weight on top of me. I was being pushed down into my back. Alan had pinned me, his arms gently wrapping around my wrists. Mew, I'm gonna kill you now. You know you can tell me anything. Alan? My heart started to pound and I felt him starting to come closer to my face. I went stiff. Hold him. Kiss him. Oh my god. Ugh. Um, I like holding. That's more comforting than kissing, really. I am not sure if I want to continue whatever that was. But I know I don't want to let him go. Even if it was for a bit. My hand reaches out towards his face, my thumb rubbing across his cheek. I could feel the rough patch of his scar. He leaned into my touch, pressing his lips at the palm of my hand. He seemed to get the idea that I didn't want to go any further. He briefly smiled at me, only pulling me closer to his body and wrapping his arms around my waist. My hand drifted up to his brown hair and I slowly began to stroke it. Ah, uh, what else are we going to stroke tonight? We must have stayed l like that for a good few minutes holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan robbing the... Do you plan to rob the convenience store again? Alan got up from my chest, rolling his eyes. I'll leave that for another day. But no, I think you'll like this much better. He took my hand and guided me back to the woods. It was a bit of a walk like most of our get-togethers, but for some reason it felt longer than before. Gradually, the trees had become sparse, and the patches of the night sky peeked through the branches. We were going uphill, having a bit of a hike on our way there. He seemed to have noticed that I was getting fatigued. If you want, I can carry you. It's no bother. Hmm. Ho ho! Do I be a little bitch? No, I'm joking. Um kind of romantic. You want to carry me? Uh, sure. Whatever. It seemed a little silly, but I wouldn't mind. I raised my arms. He mo- ocean. Motioning him to pick me up. Yes! Do all the work for me, please! He smiled at me, and I just- and just as quickly lifted my body, carrying me bridal style. You're incredibly cute. Shut up. See? Oh, that was a quick change. Hold on. We're gonna do that again. Uh, this setting to... Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> um, this setting to laying on the ground. We both lay down on the soft grass. This is a nice angle I'm looking at. The sky was completely bare of any clouds, and the darkness of the woods made the tiniest dots of the stars twinkle brighter. It was so nice and cool out here. I looked over to Alan, eyes glowing with awe It made me smile, seeing him like a kid in the candy store. What's your favorite... hmm? Constellation, I mean. What's your favorite constellation? Oh. I don't know. What is Draco? Draco? I like Draco. Ah, that's a good one. People often confuse it for the Big Dipper. Aren't they kind of same? Aren't they kind of the same? Not really. The Big Dipper is supposed to be a guide into finding Draco. Yeah. Which is your favorite? Orion. The Hunter one? Why is that? The story behind it is cool. I share the same last name. Alan Orion? That's your full name? Alan simply gave me a nod, sighing peacefully. 
and taking in the fresh air around us. You sure know a lot about constellations, huh? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. This was probably the first thing I know. I know something personal about him, and that's probably um, a bad thing since you opened up so much to him. Like, you really need to set boundaries for yourself, bro. My eyes went from looking at the stars to the stitched scar of his arm. Alan. Hmm? About those scars. Oh. I see a smile drop, and I immediately feel bad for bringing it up. I I'm sorry. I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but it's okay. You're just worried about me, right? I give him a nod. Laying on my side, looking over at him, I gave him a few moments to collect his thoughts. He finally spoke up. Well, to start off, most of these scars are recent, only due to me being... due to me and my recklessness. Like? <laughs> like trying to feed a bear. Alan. I know. I know. It was dumb. Extremely dumb. I lightly punched his arm, as if it was some sort of punishment for putting himself in danger like that. He only retaliated with a soft chuckle. Chuckle. His smile faded, however. Not all of them are new, though. He shifted uncomfortably. I gave him another moment. I was kinda a troubled kid, got bullied a lot, and well... I got pretty tired of it, and that I got physical. Wait, I got so tired of it that I got physical, so those cigarette bur burns were from your bullies? No, they were from my older brother. What? You have a brother? He did that to you? I have three, actually. This was spinning my entire world. Alan must have been through a lot. Is that why he is in the woods to escape from it all? We were pretty dysfunctional. Mom was constantly in and out of the hospital, so two of my older brothers had to take care of us. The Ellis, he burnt cigarettes on me whenever I would win in, in a fight, telling me I'd finally become what I was meant to do. It was a fight. It was to fight back and not let others push me. I'd hate to say that it worked. What about your other brothers? Second, Ellis wanted to pretend that everything was fine and ignored our problems. He was desperately trying to be like the dad of the, our group. When I didn't need one, I wanted a brother. He heavily sighed after his rant. I kept myself quiet to let him continue. My youngest brother, I got along with him at first, but he wasn't the worst out of all of them. But we had a fallout. I'm sorry. It's alright. They were nothing compared to my school life. I got called crazy-eyed Alan by my entire class. I only gave him a sad expression, feeling incredibly sorry for him. I scooted closer to him, practically touching shoulders. I can't imagine how long it must have endured it. One instance in particular pushed me over the edge. That day I decided to drop out of school, leave my family, and never look back. We both stayed silent, continuing to look up at the night sky. I always thought I was meant to be alone. I didn't like being around people. I started to feel his hand, starting to brush against mine. That was until I met you, Doe Eyes. Bro, all you did was saw me cry in the woods that one time, and you were like, This girl's gonna change my whole life! Bro. I don't know if I'm ready for a bur for that, for that, bro. I'm not sure. <laughs> he took a hold of my hand, squeezing it tightly, and made my heart race. Alan, hmm? I look over to him, meeting his eyes, giving me the softest expression I have ever seen from him. I think your eyes are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say that. I think you have very beautiful eyes. A smile slowly creeped onto him. I could see his face reddening. Thank you. I think I should go back home now. Alright then. We both got up from our spot. I stretched out my arms, feeling a yawn come up. Alan noted, standing beside me. Let me carry you. It's fine, Alan. I'm just a little tired. You already carried me so long. A 
and let me do the rest of the work myself, please. Before I could get on my feet, I felt his arms hook around my legs and back, proceeding to pick me up from the ground and ease. Hey, hey! He gave me a smile, holding me closer to his body. I insist. I gave in, pouting on the way over there, before my eyes began to grow heavy. I leaned onto his chest, making him my personal pillow, and rested my eyes. You're so romantic. I could barely tell what was going on around me, only feeling my body being set down on something soft and comfortable. I smiled, cuddling up to something soft I could find next to me. Before I drifted off to sleep, something warm pressed against my cheek, and I heard Alan's voice. Good night, Doe Eyes. And then he kills me. I, I don't know. What if I kissed him? I. Would that change the story? Um. Hold on. I really do have to go back and look. Mio. All right. I wonder if you can. So I'm gonna just. Um. I wonder what happens if you put. Put more? No. I'll just. I uh, know. Just. It's not important. It's not important. Yes, it's okay. I'll skip it. Two. Stay silent. My hands creeped up to my arms, trying to give myself some sort of comfort. For God's sake, I really don't know where the hell I am. Snappo. The deafening silence was abrupted by what seemed a tw Okay. Cry? I wasn't crying, though. Bro. I, it looks like the same. I'm not gonna check my phone. I'm just gonna get out. With a groan, I forced myself up from the comfort of my bed. I haven't been do motivated to do anything in a while. That's kind of sad. It's the same. Um. You didn't mind? mind it, but any kind of attention like that makes me feel wary. I promised myself I wouldn't get into a new relationship. Not until I felt ready. I only replied with a nervous laugh. We began to start a whole different conversation from there. At first, it was just regular small talk, most of it about me. It's kind of this game-ish. And then we get to the deer... And then I get an ice cream, because he also gets ice cream, and see if that changes. I reached into the cold freezer, grabbing myself whatever seemed most appealing. Alan flashed me a smile. He seemed giddy that we got the same thing. Got everything? Yeah, let's go. I knew he would like that. We left the store, basking in our glorious treats. Alan seemed to scarf down his ice cream. You're gonna choke yourself. Okay. Does it change... Is it gonna change the way it looks? Oh yeah, it does. He, it's the same face, but he, he still grips my hand, and he still has ice cream. All right. Uh, maybe if I, what happens if I don't offer him anything? Stay silent. Might be a bad idea. He only smiled at me before walking away and continuing to eat his forbidden chocolate bar. Okay. We don't do this. Don't bother. It's too early for this. <laughs> okay. Despite the rough morning, I didn't feel quite as tired as I did before. It could be because I was pretty much looking forward to meeting up with the- Yep. It's the same, but I didn't check my phone or anything. So I get the call from Erica anyway. We meet up with the two people. I'm, I'm gonna stay quiet. Don't say- sh Oh, shit, this is so not going as planned. It's uncomfortable. Air was beginning to get too much to me. I heaved out a shaky breath. Then another, and another. It was at this point Alan took a hold of me with a stern look on his face. Oh, he t pulls me out of there. Without a word, he took me away from the park. He wrapped his arms around me protectively. I can't explain why. Yep. Uh, Mew. I looked back to see... Why... I still don't understand, like, this plot point. It's, like, a little, like, 
Erica and him, like, I don't know. It doesn't really do anything for the story. It doesn't... I mean, I, I, you see the jealousy come in from the hatchet man, but, like, that's the only thing we're getting here. We see that he's jealous. There are other ways that you can portray that that doesn't have this whole other plot line that just doesn't go anywhere. Um... Ignore them. I broke eye contact with them, Alan's grip getting tighter around my shoulders, and we continue to walk back. Where? I'm not sure. I just want to leave. Now we're gonna kiss him after basically ignoring him and not giving him anything. I pressed my lips against his. He seemed to be taken by surprise, but leaned into our kiss. It was deep and passionate. Alan then pressed up against me, and I could immediately feel his excitement. Yeah, that's exactly what you felt. I really like ya, doe eyes. I shivered. His breath tickled the lobe of my ear. You have no idea how much you make me feel. Every time I look at ya, my heart swells. It's like I want to hold ya and never let you go. Ever. His choice of words made me feel something. Although it sounded like a tad possessive, he made me feel wanted and cared for. His hands started trailing up my wrists, making their way all over my body. Hmm, 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 interesting. I've been very avoidant this whole one, so uh, let's just save right here and stop him. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to continue whatever this was, but I know that I don't want to let him go, even if it was for a bit. My hand reaches out towards his face, and it, it's the same. So wait, 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 it looks the same, though, if you... So if I let him continue, what's going to happen? Alan Pepper kisses from my jaw to my collar. Everything about you is perfect. I want to treasure you. You're the only good person in my life. I mean, I'm the only person in your life ever because you, you shut yourself in the woods, man. How could he even speak with, like this with no sweat? Just hearing those words made me look away in embarrassment. I suddenly feel his hand take hold of my face, pulling me towards his direction. Look at me, doe eyes. I want to see your reaction. Shouldn't be this good. Arousal started growing inside of me. One quick, swift motion, he hooked my... Um. Yep, he did that. And then his mouth was hungry and ravenous, leaving kisses at the exposed skin of my thighs. And then I felt something sharp. He stubbed the axe into my crotch and, uh, are you biting me? Uh, I didn't get an answer, but I could feel the curling of the smirk forming against my inner thigh. The only re response was another bite sinking his teeth deeper. He was trying to mark me multiple times. You're all ready just for me. It's a few little bites is all it takes to... You're all ready just for me. Is a few little bites all it takes, doe eyes. He could have gotten a retort out of me, but I was stopped when he pulled up my hips towards my face and around his tongue. Who knew you would taste so sweet as well? His mouth started to work, and in my desperation, my own hands focused on running down to his head, where I took fistfuls of his brown hair, the tiniest touch of his. Whether it w would be a graze of his fingertips or his tongue was pushing me a little closer to the edge. I could feel the heat building up, like a low burn at the pit of my stomach. He then det detached himself. Alan? I don't want to finish just yet, Doe Eyes. I want more of you. He removed himself from me, hastily removing his clothes. It seemed like he was de as desperate as I was. I sure wasn't complaining. He got rid of his turtleneck, tossed it off to the side. My eyes couldn't help but wander to admire his bare chest. Then, that is until, holy shit, I saw a scar, a huge scar. In fact, his whole body was covered in injuries. He was in way worse shape than I expected. More scratches, cigar burns, and again, the scar at the side of his abdomen. 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 I cannot say that. Abdomen. Abdomen. I can't do that. It didn't look fresh. 
But still, how long has he had these before? Alan, what happened to you? Oh, these? He looked away from my gaze, brushing one of his scars. Some of these are from childhood. Others are more recent. We both stood silent with my concern still weighing down. Don't worry about it, Alan. These are clearly not simple scratch marks. Are you hurt? It's okay, Doe Eyes. I swear, they didn't even hurt. What? What is it he going on about? I'll I'll explain later. Just please, let's keep going. I I wanna, I want you right now. I shouldn't push if it, if he doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. It's okay, Doe Eyes. You can relax with me. He was soon all over me again, positioning himself between my legs, his hands prying them open. I could feel him. We can take it nice and slow. I want you to want me. All in one go, I feel him buried into inside till it, it helps, and then help. I can't. Uh, yep, breath hitch. Ha. Fair. <laughs> yeah. F yep. Uh huh. You filled that up so much. His hips began to move along mine. Um, the movement first starts slow, then quickly built up speed. Good. You feel so. Good. Can you feel me all the way in? Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Great. Yeah. Uh-huh. The mouth went around towards my neck, attacking any spot that might cause a reaction. Sure enough, he did. He didn't give me any time to process, but I didn't care anymore. I just wanted him. I needed him. Look at you. You look so amazing like this. I can't believe. Each word he spoke was followed by a rough thrust. Each time I could feel my mind getting fuzzy. I like the other ending better, by the way. I'm just going to say that right here in the middle of this. <gasps> I like the stars ending. Carry me bridal style ending better, please. Not this. I can't believe I get to keep you like this. You're all mine. 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 I was his. All his. He was rough, and I could see him baring his teeth almost animalistically. Doe-wise. I, I love you. My mind went blank. He held me tightly as something warm began to fill me. He grunts, and we both lie, sweating, catching our breaths. My hand drifted up to his brown hair, and I slowly began to stroke it. We must have stayed like that for a good few minutes, holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan robbing the convenience store again? Nope. Now we're going to go out to the other ending. Um, you're fine. You'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'm good. I don't need you to do anything. I would simply feel bad for making him carry me all the way up. You're incredibly cute. Shut. I'm gonna say Pegasus now. Pegasus. Ah, that's a good one. Did you know? Oh, you could find the galaxy of Andromedia using that constellation. Really now? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to see. Obviously, it looks like a regular star, though. The, the naked not. Nah, through the naked eye, but it's there. Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Oh yeah, Orion. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Here we go. <sighs> I'm glad to have met you. I've been avoiding. I'll give him one little. I mean, I already gave him one thing, so I guess I'll give him one more thing. I'm glad to have met you. I gripped his hand back tightly and responded with his thumb rubbing against the back of my hand. I feel the same. I think I should go back home now. Alright. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was gonna go back. I wasn't gonna skip. Hold on. Say nothing. I couldn't bring myself to say anything. I felt choked up in my... I think I should go back home now. Bro, that's it? That's it? Good night, good doe. Okay. That was my dear hatchet man and some and then some. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um about uh the game. The game. Well, I like the style. I do. My dear hatchet man had a, like a plot like a side plot going on with the two friends that I didn't see like I I didn't really understand why that was there. Like it didn't really I don't know like, the only thing I could think of is, like, it, it shows the hatchet's man, the hatchet man's reaction to you talking to other people, but that's it. 
that's literally it. Like, there was no point to any of that. Um, I, you could have did that with, like, the convenience store clerk. You could have been, like, you, you could have, what if, like, the convenience store clerk, like, flirted with you or something, and then you could have seen his reaction to that. To, um, and then it wouldn't have, like, you know, but just put this random thing in the middle that, you know, relates directly to your character, but it doesn't have really much of a satisfying ending or anything. And you still have to go see them, even if you ignore Erica. So that's like, it's not like even an option that you get to just like completely blow them off. She calls you anyway. <laughs> Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!